In today's video, we're going to take a look at Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital, ticker PFLT. This is the seventh video that's a part of my portfolio series where I'm doing an in-depth analysis of all 31 stocks currently in my own portfolio. If you're new to my channel, my primary focus is on income investing and also dividend growth investing with holdings that offer at least a 4% dividend yield. As I'll say in every video in this series, this isn't done in any particular order. So just because this video is 7th in this series does not mean that this is my 7th favorite stock or my 7th largest holding. Also note that because I own all these stocks, I am biased towards them, so do your own research and come to your own conclusion before making any investment decision for yourself. Also let me know if there's any improvements to this series I can make going forward. Feel free to check out last week's video which was on Main Street Capital, another BDC, ticker symbol MAIN. So logging into my Vanguard account, which is where I do all my dividend investing, as of the making of this video, I currently own a little over 488 shares of Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital stock, and their stock currently pays monthly dividends, with their last being for 10.25 cents per share. With the number of shares that I own of PFLT, I currently receive a little over $50 every month in dividends from this stock. Pennant Park is a business development company that seeks to make secondary direct, debt, equity, and loan investments. They only invest through floating rate loans in private or thinly traded or small market cap public middle market companies. PFLT primarily invests in the United States and to a limited extent non-US companies, and they typically invest between $2 million and $20 million into each company. Pennant Park also invests in equity securities including preferred stock, common stock, warrants, or options received in connection with debt investments. According to their website, it says they provide funding to companies with a proven management team, competitive market positions, strong cash flow, growth potential, and viable exit strategies. This company had their IPO back in 2011, and up to this point, I think the key word you could use to describe this company would be stable. PFLT has been a very stable monthly dividend stock. They've never cut their dividend distributions throughout their entire history, which is great, but on the other hand, they also went a very long time without increasing their dividends too. If we look at their dividend distribution history, we can see this company grew it every year for three years, but then what followed was eight years of no dividend growth whatsoever. Then finally, in February of this year, the company announced that they'd be growing their dividend distributions to now 10 cents per share. And then again in May of this year, Pennant Park announced that they'd be increasing their dividend again another 5% to where it now pays 10.25 cents per share. You might have noticed in 2018 there appeared to be a dividend cut, and then in 2019 you can see a small gap in their distributions. I double-checked on the company's website and confirmed that Seeking Alpha's chart appears to be incorrect. There wasn't a dividend reduction in 2018 or a period where they didn't pay any in 2019. Sometimes Seeking Alpha's information isn't always accurate, which is why it's good to double-check on the stock's website if something looks off. But like I said, PFLT's provided consistent monthly dividend distributions for people who love receiving monthly income. Looking at their share price performance, this has also been very consistent since their IPO. You can see there were periods where the share price would move up for some time and then back down for a bit and then resume going back up and so on. Right before 2022 when the whole market really started becoming chaotic, it was trading around its IPO price 11 years ago. But although the share price didn't really move during that time, it did offer a huge dividend yield of around 10%. Again, PFLT has been a really stable business development company that's been a really good choice for people who are seeking monthly dividends. It's not an ideal holding if you're the kind of person who loves share price appreciation and consistent dividend growth, but PFLT consistently yields over 10.5%, so it's been a great choice for income investors rather than dividend growth investors. According to Pennant Park, one of their priorities is building a portfolio that's more focused on capital preservation. They're a company that doesn't like to invest in highly risky companies. And while that does mean less potential for growth, it has resulted in exactly what we've seen up to this point, which is a very steady share price and dividend amount each month. It's also because of this goal that they prioritize investing in senior secured loans. Investing in more common equity investments can lead to more potential growth, but it's considered riskier than first lien, second lien, and preferred equity investments. And while they do hold some equity investments, they don't make up a very sizable amount of their overall portfolio. If we look at their portfolio breakdown, we can see as of December 31st, they have investments in 126 different companies with an average investment size of $9.1 million. They have an 11.3% yield at cost, which is pretty comparable with other BDCs in our high interest rate environment. And then 87% are secured investments, with the other 13% being subordinated debt, preferred equity, and common equity. You can see a breakdown of what industries they invest in over on the left. When I first saw that media was their largest sector, I was kind of surprised because media companies typically aren't what I'd consider to be safer. So I decided to look up this company's latest quarterly report and just research some of the media companies that Penn & Park has lent money to. After looking up a lot of these companies, I think it's wrong to consider them media companies, because when I think of media, I think of industries like film production or social media. But a lot of what these companies actually do is provide some type of marketing or advertising service. For example, one company they invest in is called AdNet, which provides digital advertising services. Another media company is called Kinetics, which allows companies to create their own online video players and show advertisements in case they don't want to use YouTube, Vimeo, or some other large platform. 
So I think a lot of these companies would be better off being classified as marketing or advertising companies as opposed to media. But going back to their breakdown, we can see a lot more sectors including IT services, personal products, diversified consumer services, and healthcare among others. Their largest sector only makes up 7.9% of their overall portfolio, which is a good amount I'd say. If we look at their financial results, we can see things have kept sustaining or slightly growing for PFLT. Over the last four quarters, their portfolio values remain pretty consistent. Their debt is down quite a bit from a year ago and their NAV is only down slightly, which isn't too bad. Their net investment income has also kept growing, which explains why they've been able to grow their dividends recently. There is one criticism for this company that I do have, which is that I would have liked to have seen more dividend growth than what we've gotten up to this point. This BDC exclusively owns floating rate debt, which results in more interest income being generated during periods of high interest rates. We've been seeing a lot of other BDCs that don't completely invest in floating rate debt increase their dividends by a much greater amount than PFLT. For example, Alrock Capital's portfolio isn't 100% floating rate debt, but they've been able to increase their dividends by a much larger amount. I was hoping we'd see more growth than just these minuscule increases from PFLT, but so far this is all we've been getting. Ultimately though, it is good that we're getting at least some kind of growth from this stock. In addition to PFLT, the company that owns and operates this BDC also has another BDC which is called Penn & Park Investment Corporation, ticker PNNT. This one is older than PFLT and was founded back in 2007. I've been asked what I think about this one because it is owned by the same company and it offers a very high yield which is currently over 14%. Unfortunately, this one just hasn't been nearly as good as PFLT. It's gone through a couple of really sizable dividend cuts and their share price is down 60% since their IPO. According to their website, PNNT holds a lot of less secured investments and instead holds a lot of second lien, subordinated debt, and equity investments. This would make it riskier than PFLT considering both portfolios are almost equal in size and diversification. It's always unfortunate when a company that has a good track record in almost every other area can still launch a bad product. For example, Ares Management Corporation, which has been an outstanding alternative asset manager, manages Ares Capital, which is a great BDC. But Ares also has a closed-end fund, which is Ares Dynamic Credit Allocation Fund. Unlike almost everything this company has launched, this fund in particular has been a very poor performer. It's just a reminder that a good company can still launch mediocre products. To summarize, Penn & Park Floating Rate Capital has been a very sturdy monthly dividend stock. If you're looking for growth, then the only way you'll experience that is if you choose to reinvest your dividends. Considering the fact it consistently yields over 10%, it is a good way to create a dividend reinvestment snowball if that's something you're interested in. I've seen some people say PFLT is almost like a super high paying savings account considering how the share price doesn't change over the long term, but you should not view it in that way. It's entirely possible you could put money into it and then have to wait years for the share price to recover, so I don't recommend treating this stock like that. I would however suggest this holding for the following types of investors. People who are confident you won't need the money for a few years and want to earn a high percentage, or those of you who want to build up a large monthly dividend snowball, or even those of you who like to invest in these higher yielding stocks and then use the dividend proceeds to invest in other dividends stocks. However, PFLT is definitely not an ideal holding for traditional dividend growth investors. But with that being said, that's going to wrap up today's look at Penn & Park Floating Rate Capital. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. You'll also have the option of reading this analysis as well as every other analysis that I do in this series. Plus it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.